Welcome to my lecture online. So now for something a little bit more complicated. So here we're going to look at a probability dis distribution of taking a multiple choice test. It's a short test. There's only five questions and each of the five questions has three possible answers, A, B, or C. Only one of those three answers can be correct. Now you've been asked to take the test without reading the questions, which means you have to randomly pick an answer for each of the question and now after you've done that you're supposed to answer the following five questions first of all how many of the five will be answered correctly well you say to yourself the probability of picking the correct answer in each case would be one out of three there's three possible answers only one is correct so the probability of getting the right answer for question number one would be one out of three for getting the right question here would be 1 out of 3, over here would be 1 out of 3, over here would be 1 out of 3, and again 1 out of 3. So randomly picked, you only have 1 out of 3 chances that you'll pick the correct answer in each case. If you then add them all up, that gives you 5 out of 3, so you'd expect 5 out of 3 correct answers. But that's kind of strange because you can't have a decimal correct number of answers. It's either 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. It can be 5 over 3, which is essentially 1.67. You can't have a fractional correct answer. So it seems kind of odd to answer how many will be correct. And you, you realize it could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. And each of those possible results has a certain probability assigned to it. And so it becomes an answer, a question of trying to find the probability of each. But that doesn't give you the answer to how many will be correct. You don't know. You can only associate a probability that you'll have zero correct answers or one correct answer or two correct answers. But you can see that on average it would be about five out of three. What if you did this with, a, with an entire class, a big class, and you ask all of the students not to read the questions, randomly answer the questions. Now you kind of have a distribution and you'd expect that the most likely scenario would be that the number of correct answers on average would be about five out of three. It would be fairly close to that if it's a large class. The distribution would, of course, the probability would be towards the closest to the average answer, it would be somewhere around 1.67 or five out of three, or five over three. Now, what if you were to ask this question, what is the probability that you picked five correct answers? Now this you can fairly easily calculate because these are independent events. Whatever happens in question one is completely independent for question two, which means you have a one in three chance to get question one right, one in three chance to get question two right, one in three chance to get question three right, which means that the probability that all five are correct is simply equal to one-third times one-third times one-third times one-third times one-third and so one divided by three and raise that to the fifth power and we get somewhere in the neighborhood of this is equal to 0 0.004 so 0.4 percent probability that all five would be correct when you randomly pick those five answers that's not a lot of chance to get them all correct. So obviously we should read the question and be ready to take the test. What is the probability that you picked zero correct answers? Now notice here that it's more likely you picked the wrong answer in each case than you picked the right answer. So the probability to get all five incorrect should be greater than the probability to get all five correct. So in this case, we try to find the probability that zero is correct or zero answers are correct. So, in this case, there's two-thirds probability that you'll pick the wrong answer for each of the possible values. So that's two-thirds times two-thirds times two-thirds times two-thirds. And notice, it's essentially two divided by three to the fifth power. Oh, let me try it again. Two divided by three, and then to the fifth power. So notice, we have, whoop, trying to get the lid off here. Ah, there we go, 0 0.13 or about 
13% probability that all five will be wrong. So you have a much greater probability, roughly a little bit more than four times as large, to get all four. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. Let me look that again. Ooh, 40 times as large. A much greater probability that all five will be wrong compared to all five being correct. And again, the reason for that is, in each case, there's two-thirds probability to get it wrong and only one-third probability to get it right. So, all right. And finally, what is the probability that you picked two correct answers? Now here, we don't have a good method to do that, at least not yet. There is a method that should exist to make it relatively easy to answer question number five. And that's why we're here now, because we need to find a special technique that allows us to find the answer to question number five. And so, if you're interested, let's do some videos to show you how to do that. You can see that up until now, some simplistic type of examples where we have binary situations with few, with few possibilities are easy to manipulate. But when it gets more complicated like this, where there's three possible answers for each, and there's five possible questions, now we're dealing with a different way of getting the probability of getting two right, or three right, or four right, or one right, and so forth. So let's stay tuned and find out how to do that. Another cliffhanger? <laughs> All right.